this is great. This is great. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for coming today. Uh, and just a word before I forget uh, about Sunday school today. COVID is still kicking around. So we have some uh, people out. The teachers are out for um, uh, kindergarten through fifth. So middle school and high school, you've got a class. The younger grades, either you can hang out in the nursery or you can hang out in the sanctuary or in the narthex or wherever you like. So just so you know. Or maybe not the, well, what? <laughs> just not the parking lot. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. And um, before we get too far away from Christmas, got a little show and tell. I got these for Christmas this year, and they're awesome gloves. They're huge gloves. They're really, I feel like an astronaut when I'm wearing these. But uh, what makes them really special is that they're heated. These are heated gloves. I couldn't believe it. I'm wearing them, and then if you push this button here, they, this, they come on. And, uh-huh. Uh, how about that? How about those apples, huh? So, and, and, and I'm out there shoveling or whatever, which I'm probably going to do, and you're probably going to do tomorrow morning. Um, uh, my hands are nice and warm, because I, I always have cold hands. So this is a great gift. I discovered, though, the way, they run, the way they work is that inside here, there's a battery. There's a battery, and it keeps them warm. But I also discovered if you don't charge the battery, they don't work. They don't get warm. Uh, they work as regular gloves, but uh, you're carrying around this battery for no reason if it's not charged up and it doesn't warm up your hands. And it got me thinking. <laughs> hmm? Got me thinking, as most things do. What else needs to be charged, recharged from time to time? Justin yourself. That's right. Yourself. Everybody does. You know who else? Jesus. Jesus needed to have his energy recharged from time to time. Jesus himself, son of God, God in human form, celebrated him coming at Christmas, right? He needed to be recharged because he, he was out there, he was preaching, he was teaching, he was healing people, and thousands of people came to be near him. And so every so often, he would go off by himself, by himself, up on a mountain, maybe walking along the Sea of Galilee, by himself to recharge, to pray, to be with God, to remember who he was and why he was doing what he was doing, what he was called to do. And you're right, we need to do the same thing as uh, children of God as disciples of Christ. We need to have our batteries recharged from time to time uh, because our energy goes out. Our energy goes out with, with school or with friends or if we're sick especially, our energy's going out, right? And so we get tired and we don't, we don't feel like ourselves anymore. So we need to recharge who we are and remember who we are. How do we do that? How do we recharge ourselves? Any ideas? Yeah. We sleep, good, yes, yeah, and you eat, mm-hmm. Could it have anything to do with this room we're in, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> it does have to do with coming here. That's what church is all about. Church is all about coming together to, to restore ourselves, to re, uh, recharge who we are to remember who we are as uh, children of God. We do that through worship. We do that through Sunday school. We do that through our time in the nursery, through singing, through praying, through all of those things we do here. That helps us restore ourselves, to bring up that, that reservoir of spiritual energy, to make that, the battery recharge in who we are so that we can remember that we're loved, that we're valued, that God loves you just the way you are, and then we can go out and share that love with other people so that they know that they're important too, that they're valued too, and that there's more goodness in the world than we realize. And we can only do that by restoring who we are, by recharging ourselves, like we recharge these batteries. We do that by coming to church. That's why church is so important to us in our lives. All right.
I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming up. You nailed that hymn. That was great. It was a beautiful hymn, unfamiliar, and you nailed it. That was awesome. Welcome to worship, especially if you're new uh, here at First Congregational Church. We're especially glad that you're with us this morning. There is a, a guest registry in the Narthex. Uh, if you have, haven't had a chance to sign up, please do. Uh, and we, you can get our uh, 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 a weekly uh, newsletter, The Messenger, and uh, has a little article in there for me every week and a bunch of things about what's happening here at First Congregational Church. So let you know about, more about who we are and uh, what's going on here. And uh, who knows, we hope, at least, that this will become your church home. Uh, after worship, of course, is coffee hour in the Narthex. Uh, and this evening, uh, at 7 o'clock, the confirmation class will be meeting in uh, the youth room uh, tonight. 7 o'clock. Um, that should be on their schedules. No surprise to them, but just thought you all should know. <laughs> Wednesday, uh, the Board of Deacons uh, will be meeting. 7 o'clock in the lounge. And I'll be working on the budget for 2024 in preparation for the winter congregational meeting that is coming up at the end of February. So uh, the main item of that, of course, is the uh, budget. We operate on a calendar year budget here. So um, what comes to you at that winter congregational meeting is on recommendation of the Board of Deacons. So we're working on that now uh, ahead of that meeting in, uh, in February. Next Sunday, uh, first Sunday of the month, so it's Communion Sunday, which is always a great reminder that it's also Food Pantry Sunday. So this week, like today, if you go to Shaw's to get a new shovel or salt or whatever, you can pick up some stuff for the food pantry, bring it to church next Sunday, and we'll see that it gets to the, uh, the food pantries here in Melrose. Uh, also, after worship next Sunday, uh, we'll be having a Christmas fair debriefing meeting, uh, which is always an important and good thing to do. Uh, after having had a very successful fair this year to, uh, to review what we did uh, that worked, what didn't work so well, and uh, uh, adapt as we go forward into next year before we forget <laughs> what worked and what didn't work uh, this year. Uh, right now, your offering uh, is invited as we uh, continue to take our offering in a contactless way here at the church. The offering plates are at the exits uh, to the narthex. Um, the uh, 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 QR code is here in the bulletin as well if you'd like to contribute that way as a way of making tangible your faith and your gratitude for God's blessings in your life uh, that strengthen then the ministries of First Congregational Church, the ministries of compassion and healing, justice and love in this congregation and in the wider community as well. Your offering is invited. So reading from uh, the Gospel of Mark the uh, first chapter. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded by his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Here ends our scripture lessons for this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Compassionate Creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts Bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I got some bad news in the mail this week. Found out that it's my 40th high school reunion <laughs> coming up this spring. It was a bad day when I got that in the mail. That hit me hard. Now, I know... 
there are people in here who have high school reunions way past 40 years, but that one, that one hit me hard. I'm getting old. Feels like I'm getting old. Getting old with that. Getting old. I noticed, too, that there are things around that were around when I was a kid that just aren't around anymore. For example, when, when I was a kid and we'd travel around and we'd stay in a motel, there'd be a big sign out front that would say, color TVs <laughs> and in-room phones. I remember uh, when I was a kid um, uh, walking around, riding my bike around the neighborhood when I was five years old, and it never occurred to anybody that that wouldn't be safe. I remember this massive phone directory that would land in front of the house once a year with the yellow pages up front and the white pages in the back. That actually wasn't that long ago uh, that that was the case here. In fact, there are things that have only recently gone extinct. Like, say, VCRs and incandescent light bulbs. Then there are soon to be extinct things like landlines and stick shift cars. Culturally, things go extinct because they are no longer useful. They get replaced with things that we think, at least, are better. But you know what? There are some things that should go extinct. You know, we try and prevent things from going extinct, but there are some things that should go extinct. One of my favorite restaurants when I was growing up was a place called Sambo's. I don't know if anybody remembers Sambo's, but it was named after an old children's book called Little Black Sambo. And the walls of this restaurant had illustrations from the book. And it was one of the most racially insensitive places you can imagine. But at the time, it never occurred to us. But then, thankfully, we evolved. And that restaurant has rightfully gone extinct. The extinction of certain behaviors and attitudes is long past due. The extinction of certain behaviors and attitudes is long past due. And we have to be vigilant in order to keep certain species on the extinct list. Things like species like racism, like homophobia, like misogyny, like ageism. And to today's gospel text, Jesus acts as an agent of extinction. This is a tough text in many ways. Because it deals with something that we'd rather not deal with today. Casting out demons. We don't like to deal with that because the whole business just sounds far-fetched. And even downright primitive for our modern minds, our modern world. And biblical scholars and others have sought to say that 2,000 years ago, there was pretty much no understanding of mental illness. So anything that today you would see a clinician about, a therapist about, they would consider to be demon possession back then. Maybe. But I think if we can suspend our modern skepticism for just a moment, there's enormous value in these stories from Jesus. There's great value in them because they tell us that in the presence of Jesus, that which distorts that which hurts, that which is evil, goes extinct. Have you ever noticed that the demonic spirits that Jesus encounters always identify themselves in the plural? The unclean spirit in this story, in the synagogue, asks Jesus, have you come to destroy us? I think that's because the brokenness in society, the brokenness of the human spirit comes in so many different forms. They are, in fact, legion. But here's the thing. With Christ in our lives, we find the courage to scour out what is unclean. We have the courage to relegate bad behaviors and wrong beliefs to that extinction list. And when we do, when we do that, we create more room for that which is good and right and healing and holy. 
And make no mistake, we have already put a lot of wrong things on that extinct list, and that's great. But we are still breathing the same air as some very large and dangerous dinosaurs that are wandering around out there. Things like the lies, belittling, vitriol, hatred, and outright cruelty on the part of some politicians and political parties. For our future, that needs to go extinct. Also, did you know that children make up 26% of this country's population, but 40% of those who live below the poverty line? Did you know that the GDP of the entire African continent is less than the Pentagon's annual budget? Poverty needs to go extinct. Because it's an absolute scandal that in 2024, so many people are dying of malnutrition and preventable diseases. And these conditions have become normalized. And people live in these conditions because they're caught in a trap whereby they are unable to improve themselves. Poverty needs to go extinct. And did you know that 20% of our food goes to waste every year. 20%. 130 pounds of food per person per year in the landfill. 130 pounds. Waste needs to go extinct. And on a personal level, personally, many of us are being eaten alive from the inside out by fear and anxiety and anger and jealousy and helplessness. All of these things need to go extinct. All of these things need to be exorcised. All of these things need to be cast out, just like that demon in that synagogue so long ago. And they can be. They can be. With Christ by our side, they can be. It starts with changing the attitude in your home and in your heart. It starts by changing uh, the climate in which you live so that it becomes inhospitable, inhospitable to hatred and bigotry and selfishness. It starts by centering yourself in the one who is there for you, the one who, with an, an all-knowing smile, says, it's okay, it's okay. Together, we've got this. It's not all up to you. God is with you, and with God, all things are possible. They really are. All things. With God, the future is secure. With God, the future is secure. With God, the future is good. Let's pray. Holy God, help us to identify those things in our lives and in our world that need to be cast out and thrown to the curb because they have no useful place. Give us the courage to look deep within ourselves and work hard in the world to foster wholeness and new beginnings. Bless our church now and always, O God as a beacon of your new life and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.